All right, so here's A. So this is another one. It, and what's good is when I get you to try them, they usually already have a zero in them. So I'm just giving you the worst case scenario here with no zeros to start with, okay? So worst case scenario, no zeros. You do A minus lambda I, which remember is just subtracting lambda down the main diagonal. So this is no different. And then you need to find the determinant of that. So it would be good to have a few zeros so that you're, you're better able to do that. So I looked at this and I said, there's two fourths here. And you could do it slightly different than me. I chose to replace row two with minus row three, so that that would be a minus four plus row two. So I replaced row two. So here I did it, this step. Everything else is the same because I've just replaced row two. Then I said, can I, now I don't want to touch row two again because I just put a zero there. If I then add it to something else, that zero will disappear. But can I look at row one and three and maybe make another zero? And it's just what we did in the last example. I said, well, here's a minus seven. So if, if this were a positive seven, I could add them. So I said, positive, uh, minus seven times row three to make that a positive seven, minus and a minus is a plus, and add it to row one. So then I changed row one and I did that. And then I don't like the 23, but I said, okay, let's go with it. If you had done it the other way, maybe it wouldn't have had that 23. Okay, so now I've got a couple zeros in here, and I do my first step of the determinant. So I go forward, and then the other forward ones were zero, so they're gone. And then backwards, I have the main diagonal, and then another one here and the other one was zero. So there they are. All right, so you end up with this crazy long expression. Fix it up a little bit so that there's not a bracket. So I put that minus in. I fixed it up a little bit. So let's see what I did. I just rewrote the first one. The second one, I noticed there was a four here. So I put that in the front with the minus sign, and I just rewrote the other two. And the third one, a minus, and a minus is a plus and I rewrote the other two. So that's all I did in that step. Do you follow? It's easy enough to follow what I've done, but you have to be able to do it on your own after. So here it is. Now I've got three terms, right? Three big terms with things multiplied. One, two, three. And I looked at them and said, what do I have in common on those three terms? So what do you see in those three terms that are similar or the same? So minus 2 minus lambda is here and here, but it's not here. And then there's no other one. But if I factor out a minus 1 here, if I write this as minus 1 times 2 plus lambda, and this is a minus 1 times 2 plus lambda, don't I have a 2 plus lambda in all three? And so then I can factor that out. So what I did is just that. I took that minus out. And while I was at it, I said, well, I might as well take the minus sign out of here. But you didn't need to do that. But I, do you see that there was two minuses? So I wrote this as minus 1 times 23 plus lambda. So minus 1 times minus 1 is a plus. 23, that, and that. I did the same thing here and here. Now I do have a common factor in all three. So I factored that out. Now forget about it. That's part of the factor. So right now I can say minus 2 is one of the eigenvectors or values. I could then say forget about the doing this anymore. Multiply this out. It's going to be a quadratic. You're either going to be able to factor it or use quadratic equation. So you don't need to go further than that. Once you've found one factor, you can stop doing this. Right? And just multiply it out. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to see if I could do it the whole way without actually factoring anything. So I went further because this is really fun. Really? really. So, I, and it's good to see this anyway for you. It's a good experience. So there's three terms in this bracket. 
and they do not have anything in common. One, two, three. But two of them do. Do you see it? The first and the last have 23 minus lambda, or 23 plus lambda. So just rewriting this one right here, do you see? I didn't touch that one, I ignored it. I took these two together, factored out the 23 minus lambda, and what do you have left? You have a 2 minus lambda and a minus 1. I just factored it out of those two. No, no, you don't. You can always multiply it out and factor. So this I fixed up. And now look what happened. So I factored out a 7, minus 7 here. I ended up with these two the same. So then I factored that out and wrote what was left. And now I have my three factors. Right. So, again, you don't need to do this at all. A actually, not even the first part. Because you can get your big long expression, multiply everything out, and get a cube. And then use synthetic or polynomial long division to factor it. And that's fine. Um, or you could do part of it get one factor out, and then what's left is a quadratic. You could multiply that out and then use a quadratic equation or factor it. Okay? So you can sort of stop at any point, but the other thing is that they're not usually this complicated. I made the worst case scenario for the two examples in class, okay, just to demonstrate what it looks like. Now what happens is that I uh, give you an easy one that can be factored this way so easy right from the beginning and you choose to multiply it out and make it really complicated. So all I'm asking you to do, you don't have to do it this way, but what I'm asking is once you get that first line, do look for a common factor in the three. Because once you get that out, you can avoid the polynomial long division part. And every question I've ever given in this course has had that first factor that you can factor out right away to make it easier. Okay? So what's left after you factor that first one out is a quadratic. But it's usually obvious right in the beginning if you've made a couple zeros or I already give you one with a couple zeros. Okay? So there, there'll be some homework posted for this, so you want to try it. Now, of course, if you were to continue on, once you get your numbers, you plug these into the a minus lambda i, you row reduce, and get your eigenvectors. Okay, so, so I just want to show you another example of starting it.